Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano, and I'm a chef on a mission. It's been fun coming up with 50 mistakes that I've seen other restaurants making. It's been a blast doing this. I've had a great time. I was actually able to whip this out in one afternoon. It was really a lot of fun. Um, I was able to just write down the topics and, and uh, just take the time. I took about, I don't know, four hours to do all the videos. I'll probably spend another four hours editing the videos. And then I'll post them online. I'll have one of my assistants either edit it or one of my assistants post it, a combination of this and that. Um, the previous 49, I've all done. I've learned them. I've mastered them. I do them all the time. I'm still improving them. Um, they've revolutionized my business. And the reason why I could all of a sudden, I just did these like on spur of the moment because somebody was in asking me the other day, Marcus, <clears throat> please, you know, we need a little help. You know, and I've had a lot of restaurateurs ask me for help. And I said, you know what, let me just create. And one of my staff members is going to a restaurant in Florida. He's leaving us after three years of service, and he's getting a management job. And, you know, he's like, Marcus, I could use, a, you know, some tips and techniques, you know, the things that top 50 mistakes and more top mistakes. And I said, I'll do that. I'll do that for you. It's easy. I can whip that out, no problem. So that was the whole, like, ambition behind this series. So the number, the 50th mistake, which might be not the first and worst mistake, However, I'm putting it last here because you guys don't take enough time off. You restaurateurs work way too much. You don't take time off. You don't smell the roses. You don't enjoy, you know, I mean, this summertime I was running 80 miles a week. I took a lot of time off to run this summer, in the middle of, of summer. I walked in Thanksgiving Day after running a race at a quarter to 12. My staff had everything under control. I looked at them. I went home, took a shower because I came right from the race. I came back, they had all the to-go orders out. I watched the first couple tables come in at 1 o'clock and I left. Went right down the road to a friend's house. Came back for a few minutes, left again, went to my, my in-laws. Came back, left again. I wasn't even here for a full hour that day. And it feels good to have the flexibility to take four hours out of my afternoon like this and make a video that's videos that are informative, because I have the time to do it, I'm not stressed for time. Um, it feels good to be able to take Thanksgiving off, basically. If I wanted to travel, I could have traveled. My staff is awesome. I owe everything to my staff because they've helped me come along this way. If I didn't have good staff, I couldn't do the, anything that I do right now. I couldn't enjoy my life. I couldn't enjoy my restaurant. I enjoy my restaurant a lot. I take time off. I don't consider work work anymore. I'm here. I'm having fun. And it's just it's a really awesome experience to own a restaurant and not have to be stuck working the restaurant every single day. Now this video is going to be a little longer because I want to take some key points. Now when I hire staff, one of the first things I tell them when the interview process is, you know, I'm hiring you to do a job. I'm a business owner. I'm a restaurateur because I'm creating jobs. I say, I'm here. I don't mind working, but understand that I'm the boss. <clears throat> I'm the one who orchestrates everything here. I'm the one who trains the managers trainers. I'm the one who trains the systems to get the systems going, and they're the ones who train you. The systems train you. Okay? So I've figured everything out. I have a job to create. I have a business to create jobs. I didn't open a restaurant to buy, buy a job for me. That wasn't the point of it. So I'm hiring you to do jobs here, so I don't have to, because if I didn't have to hire you, if I, did, if I did the job, I wouldn't have to hire you. It's plain and simple. So I get that instilled in them right away that I'm the boss, and I'm here to, you know, supervise, whatever, help in, pitch in. I'm not going to let them go down. I'm not going to sink ship at all. The sink, the ship sink at all. I'm not going to do that. But, you know, they're here because you hire your employees to do a job. And that's what happens, okay? Then you find out once they get in here where they shine and emphasize on what they love doing. And if you emphasize on what they love doing, they'll do more of what they love doing. And they'll do more of it for you. So you can do what you love doing. I love being here, but work's not work to me anymore. You know, I enjoy my restaurant, I get out, I run, I go to all my kids' basketball, baseball, football, I go to a lot of the games. I take weekends off, and the great thing is, this summertime, busy weekend in August, I walked in at uh, Thursday night, and I said, oh, I'll see you guys on Monday. I was walking out the door, actually, and I said, I'll see you guys on Monday, and they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I'm leaving for the weekend. They're like, you didn't tell us. I'm like, because I don't need to tell you. I honestly don't need to tell you that I'm leaving. You guys have everything under control. I've trained you well. You've absorbed the knowledge. You're into it. 
this is a great this is a great fit guys I'll see you on Monday I'm going to a big beer event that I've been waiting for to go all since last year and I trust you when you tell your staff you trust them you give them the power they will take it very seriously they will take that trust aspect extremely seriously and they won't let you down I can guarantee that and if you do the rest of the steps that are involved in it, you just can't walk in and say, I trust you and walk out. You've got to build that trust. You've got to figure out, get them all on the bus and figure out who's driving the bus, who's going which direction, and then emphasize on all those. And your restaurant will just go and go and go. And it's a super beautiful thing. I learned a lot of this from a, a, a friend of mine who now owns about 40 restaurants. And we were only about three, four years and three years into our restaurant. And he goes, Marcus, at the time you owned like 15 restaurants. He goes, Marcus, I own 15 restaurants, or 17 it was, and he goes, and you work harder than I do, Marcus. And it dawned on me, I was like, oh my gosh, this guy owns all these restaurants, New York City, Vegas, every, and I'm like, most of his restaurants are in New York City, and he goes, it's like, I work harder than him, and I'm doing one restaurant, how could I ever do something else? So the